New Theater is uh, such a fabulous experience. And, you know, I, I, was, I did the first show the guys ever produced here at Tiffany's Attic 51 years ago. And when my friends in LA say, oh, you're doing theater in Kansas City, and I say, oh yeah, guys, but this is like a Vegas showroom. Uh, you know, it's got a $10 million light board. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, it is, it is a really top, top tier. It's just a wonderful experience. It's so professional. The talent pool here is so good. And, um, and I've just always been so, so impressed. You know, I got started in acting. One day, Saturday morning, my mother was reading the paper and she says, oh, the Junior Players Guild are having auditions today. So then I knew if I didn't go audition, you know, I, I would be, get yelled at all the way home. So I have a career today because my fear of the stage is second only to my fear of my mother. I think if I had auditioned and never gotten it, I would probably never have had the nerve to do it again. And, and it was fun. I was 16, I was getting ready to open a production of um, Funny Thing Happened Away to the Forum. And as I'm walking out the door, I get a call from a gentleman who owned the biggest sound stage in Dallas where everybody filmed things. And out of the blue, he says, you wanna be in a movie? And I said, uh, sure. And he, and I said, do, what do I do? What were the audition pages? And so he says, no, no, no. Just uh, be at the North Park Inn tomorrow at 5 a.m. And I said, I'm opening a play tonight. I don't know if I can be. And I'm still in high school. Uh, you know, I don't know if I can get there. Um, and he says, well, you got to be there at 5 a.m. if you're going to do this. And I said. Okay, so I arrive at the North Park Inn. It's pitch black. It's November in Texas. It's cold, you know, so I'm walking down this dirt road and I'm not seeing anything. I'm not seeing people. And then I see kind of the sun coming up, uh, the silhouette of a guy kind of hunched over, very James Dean looking kind of thing with his hands in his pockets, kind of walking toward me. Uh, beautiful silhouette. So I, I, I said, excuse me, sir, do you, do you know where the set is? And he said, he looks up and it's Warren Beatty. And Warren Beatty at 28 years old with the sun coming up behind him is the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen. And so I, he says, well, I'll show you where the set is. <laughs> and I became Faye's kind of um, a stunt double. So a lot of the driving scenes in Bonnie and Clyde uh, are me for Faye. And so that was my first movie, was working on Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> so that was my first movie. And then I started doing other little movies, mostly cheapo things because uh, Texas was a right to work state. So we had a lot of runaway production. And then I got divorced and I decided I'd move to New York. My sister was in New York going to Juilliard. And, um, you know, my ex husband uh, wanted me to move to LA. So I said I'd go to New York. I couldn't get an acting agent, <laughs> I had a model agent. And then one day he called and he says, um, you know, we've got a chance here to break into something that we, we really are trying to get into, these soap operas. And you're our only, only actor. <laughs> I go over to Search for Tomorrow. It's like a, a, a three part episode, three episode part, you know, and, uh, and I don't get it. But they really like me. And so a week later, they call back and say, you know, we just hired this girl for this major lead and she's not working out. And so we want you to come do that. So suddenly I'm on a daytime soap with no acting agent <laughs> in New York. And uh, Susan Lucci and I become the early bitch goddesses of daytime. But at one point I realized, you know, if they wanted a waspy blonde, they cast it in LA. You know, in retrospect, you never know when you're just being so lucky until you look back on it. But what I quickly found out is because I had all these years in theater and because I could do comedy, they didn't have girls who looked like me who could do comedy. And so if they wanted a glamour girl for any sitcom, you know, if you could get me in the door, I would probably get it. And so suddenly I'm doing New Heart and Happy Days and all these shows. <laughs> I'm doing all the uh, Fonzie's date on Happy Days, you know, like a girl's dream in the 70s. <laughs> and so, um, and doing a lot of comedies. You know, when it comes to acting, um, I kind of found a niche playing bad guys because I don't have to be loved. Most actors don't want to play bad guys psychologically because they want to be loved. And I don't care. And so, uh, and I never cared about being accepted in any groups. It's just kind of part of my personality. But I remember my first TV movie audition, I went in uh, to see uh, Chuck Freeze and they were doing kind of a rip off of the movie Carrie, which had come out the year before, uh, telekinesis, you got Sissy Spacek uh, on, the, on the map. Uh, he had me read for the bad guy, the sorority queen. And, uh, and I said, you know, I'd really like to play the sister. Can I read for the sister? I, I want a brunette. 
I said, well, she's got more gray areas. You know, she's torn between her sister and wanting to be accepted. And, and he said, let me explain something to you. I can find a good ingenue anywhere, but a good bitch is hard to find. And he says, you can do that. <laughs> so you got that part. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm thinking, well, you know, it's not the part I wanted, but, you know, who's going to see this thing anyway? It's a little horror movie for ABC. Well, it was the number one <laughs> TV movie of the year. Started me playing bitches <laughs> forever because I'm just a wise ass and I ad lib all this stuff and make it funny. So that was kind of the secret because, you know, on Dallas, Larry and Linda were not supposed to be the stars. And uh, Dynasty wasn't really working until Joan got there. And the three of us, Larry and Joan and I, were the ones who made the bad guys funny so that you actually wanted to hear what they were gonna say next. You know, when it's a sitcom, it's very tightly scripted and you don't usually add, when you come up with an ad lib, if they like it in rehearsal, they'll let you keep it. Uh, with friends, you know, they gave us such good jokes. I mean, when you are, um, when you're a guest star on any show, usually all the best lines and best everything will go to the stars. But on Friends, every time we had guest stars, I mean, they would give the guest stars really good lines too. So I didn't really ad lib a lot. One line that everybody always quotes to me <laughs> is because, um, well, we were doing a Monica and Chandler's wedding. And, you know, all through the whole series, that we always had me being very angry because Chandler's father had left us for the Filipino houseboy. So they were finally going to bring in the father. And so they called me up and they said, we're thinking we, we like it. What do you think? We're going to get Kathleen Turner. And I said, that's brilliant. <laughs> but anyway, that's one of my favorite scenes is when they introduce her at the rehearsal dinner and she comes in and I've got on this very low cut Herbe Leger dress, which was my dress. And, um, uh, and she looks at me and says, aren't you a little old to wear a dress like that? And I say, don't you have a little too much penis to wear a dress like that? <laughs> Sorry. Who can top that? <laughs>